Do you like Led Zeppelin? Then you'll love the spirit of Grungni. Malachi McKyson and High King Thorgrim Grudgebear find themselves trapped in the Chaos Wastes, and the only way out is through. Through a horde of slavering barbarian scum. So they'll gather their elites to scold and smash, and unleash the power of a Thunder Barge. But Chaos has traditionally been a solid counter to the Dawi. So let's see if some aerial broadsides could help in this matchup, or if they'll be trampled underfoot by juggernauts and metal magic. Today, we're using the Thunder Barge mod and giving it a spin for the first time on Warhammer 3. Much has changed since last time we tried it. They can line up for devastating broadside volleys, restock friendly ammunition, flash bomb adversaries to slow them down, and provide aerial support with steam guns, long barrel snipers, and powerful payloads. The Spirit of Grungni itself is Malachi the Slayer Engineer's famous airship, the second he built after the first catastrophically exploded, and it makes quite the appearance in the Gothrek and Felix novels, carrying them and Ulrika Magdova to Mount Doom somewhere in the north. In its current form, when you use a broadside volley, it will rotate back into a neutral position, then turn back to where it was before to fire, even if it was already in position to shoot, which isn't my favorite thing. Ends up looking a little bit janky, but besides that, and maybe a bit of floatiness and lack of weight, it's a really well-designed unit that is super fun to use, and of course, the Slayer Engineer is a super awesome character that I hope we get to see one day in this trilogy. And as you might expect, it's gonna cause some damage on the way in. Coordinate Chaos Warriors will be the first to feel its wrath. Watch that in slow motion, should explode quite a few of them as it sides through the middle of their formation. But yeah, the Spirit of Grungni is unbreakable, with the trade-off being it has a gigantic hitbox, it's very slow, very susceptible to missile fire, and it's always flying. It cannot enter melee on the ground. So against factions with good artillery, like Skaven or Empire, or with powerful flyers that can clear out ground support before engaging, it can be a very risky investment. But if it's able to sit safely in the skies and plunk away, it can unleash some serious carnage, which is the game plan here, as the Howling Hordes of Chaos descend upon our stout Dawi shield walls. Leading the armies of Barak Var in the Royal Purple, by far my favorite dwarf color scheme, is the High King himself, with the Great Book of Grudges, a big map-wide boost to his army if he drops below half HP, and Oath of Vangren to point out a single target and crush it without remorse or pity. It's backed up by the Skolder Guard, a steam fire regiment of Iron Drakes with high AP values and longer range than the normal flamethrowers. Don't see them often, but they're a really cool unit. And Hammerers, I believe, are buffed as well. There's no evidence in the patch notes for it that I can tell, but they seem to be performing much better in their intended role and Pete Gate Guard have always been an awesome unit for smashing through chaos. As you might expect, tons of AP in this army, a lot of great weapons to deal with all that armor, Dragonback Slayers in the rear, Thunderers, and some Blessing Charges up front. That is the Dawi build. For the Hordes of Chaos, they silly decided to pick the pink color scheme when I was purple. How dare they? They've co-opted Azazel's banner, and they don't even have any Seneshi troops in this army. In fact, it's pretty much a Cornate theme. Gorby's Chariots of Corn return to Monkey, and a bunch of great weapons as you'd expect. Marauders and Chaos Warriors in the center with some dual weapons on the flanks and Corn chosen all the way on the left hand side, backed up by some Skull Crushers and that Chaos Sword we'll look at in a moment. Chaos Sorcerer, Lore of Metal, Forbidden Rod has a 15 second cooldown. Plague of Rust, Searing Doom, I believe those are his only two spells. Corn chosen with dual weapons, they don't have that AP symbol, but they have such high weapon strength that their armor piercing still allows them to buzzsaw their way through pretty much any Dawi unit. Skull Crushers and the Chaos Lord of Corn with his dual axes. Flaming, Wreathe, Enlightening, or at least he was in the trailer, doesn't seem to be anymore. Man, his stat line is insane on that Juggernaut. 75 melee attack, 50 melee defense, over 600 weapon strength, and huge charge bonus. Crazy dueling. He can turn most foot regiments into Hamburger Helper all by himself. So, Spirit of Grungni has its work cut out for it in this one. Malachi will be working overtime above, ensuring those guns are blasting down the correct targets and eliminating some of those important threats before they ever taste melee. But Corn Throwing Axemen are on the prowl, and though they're unlikely to burst the airship down out of nowhere, their volleys do hurt a lot, and they can at least force the Thunder Barge to reposition a bit and give the rest of their army the precious seconds it needs to close the gap. Fairly straightforward tactics for both armies here. Chaos, nothing really crazy about it at all. It's gonna rush you down, surround you with a wide build, and try to cut through all your armor. But it's true for both armies here too. I mean, airships don't really change standard Dawi tactics too much at all. They basically just combine cannons, gyro bombers, and engineers into a single unit. 
at least when Malachi's at the helm. So they're still gonna box up. They're still gonna wait for you to come to them. They're still gonna try to shoot you down and do as much damage with their artillery before both armies clash as possible. And Spirit of Grungni does have quite a bit of firepower as we have already seen. I believe it's unleashed four broadsides so far and it does have a main cannon on the front as well that I think is a little bit better suited for single target. But the broadsides are really where you get that wave clear against infantry and of course the bombs as well which are on a 60 second cooldown. You can't spam those but they're really powerful. A lot like the sky hammer you can pretty much one shot chaff if you're kind of blobbed up and in a bad position. So throwing axes, charging in, trying to bait out some of these blasting charges. They are gonna close in a little bit too far. Thunders get a little bit of a volley in there. Marauders will take the brunt of the blasting charges in the center. Time to enact the immolation initiative, but this time we're using, instead of napalm, really hot steam. And I guess rudimentary C4. Flash bomb will slow down the Gorby's chariots. They're moving incredibly slowly right now lacking pretty much all momentum, not able to bowl their way through the miners in the front ranks. Thunderers are waiting on the wings, shooting in alongside the Skolder Guard with their steam armor piercing volleys. Really nice opening shot from those blasting charges, but the Skull Crushers on the other side are gonna make contact. And though they are bonus for large tactically, their stat line is pretty bananas and they're gonna feel pretty comfortable engaging any of these low tier Dawi foot troops, especially if they get a rear charge and hammerers overextended, caught between a rock and a hard place. Marauders with great weapons and Skull Crusher Charge coming in from behind is going to break open the right flank of the Dawi force immediately because all their firepower is focused on the left side, and that is creating some openings for the Chaos Lord and the Juggernauts over on the right. But the Skulder Guard have turned their attention towards the heavy cavalry, recognizing the threat, recognizing that if they don't put some firepower into those cav right now things are going to open up there's a searing doom from above pretty interesting play there not going to devastate the unit by any stretch of the imagination but at least get it moving but now the spirit of grungy has turned its attention and might look to shoot into the mess devolving over on that side thorgrim grudge bear with the axe of grimnir plunging into the fray and he'll do his best to tie up the chaos warriors that are busting through while the scolder guard fire in and this is just value city for the steam regiment. They have incredibly fast rate of fire and these iron drakes are pretty much a nightmare for chaos if they are allowed to continue shooting. But keeping them online against the warriors of chaos, not the easiest thing in the world. Thankfully, they don't have furies, so that's at least one unit they don't have to deal with. PK guard holding down the left flank really nicely. Chaos warriors with dual weapons, the cornate version moving into melee now. Dragonback Slayers forced to commit against all these Chaos Warriors. They should be able to hold back the tide, at least for now. Skull Crushers took a lot of damage in that fight, almost immediately shattered two full units, including Hammerers, but they in turn were exploded by the Skull Regard and Zeppelin combo. Over here, it looks like a Overcast Plague of Rust, lower the PK Guard's armor by 60, and now we have a Searing Doom raining down on top, and that'll do about 3,000 damage. 25% spell resist helps a little bit there, but not as much as you'd think. Thunderers are continuing to shoot in and have not been tied up yet, but here come the Corn Chosen. Skull Crushers, though they are very low, are still a massive threat, still retain more than half of their models. A good charge from them could devastate Hammerers or any of these elite Dawi foot troops if they're already tied down. But the Skulder Guard are just straight up cooking with gas right now. They are turning these expensive armored troops into boiled dumplings. And the Corn Chosen just took a devastating drop bomb from the Spirit of Grungni above. Went down to about two-thirds HP immediately. And the Skulder Guard just have not stopped firing this entire battle. And there are not a lot of fast movers on the Chaos side to tie them up and prevent them from shooting. Something has to be done about those Iron Drakes immediately or the forces of Chaos are gonna be in big trouble. Thorgrim Grudge Bear continuing to lay about, but now the Chaos Lord of Korn is in the thick of it with his dual flaming axes. And he has 130 armor and a pretty hefty HP pool. Don't expect the Dragonback Slayers to be able to take him down anytime soon, especially when he's backed up by his Chosen, who should be able to slaughter their way through Slayers in seconds. But those Corn Chosen have a lot of expensive and powerful shooty troops looking at them. Searing Doom nicely dodged by the Thunderers. Gorby's Chariot 
have broken through the front, but they took a lot of damage under the effects of those flash bombs. And now the Zeppelin has turned their attention towards the chariots, recognizing their threat. Looks like the Iron Drakes are about to take the full brunt of their charge, but once again, flash bomb slowing down their maneuverability before they make contact. And now the Iron Drakes will look to retreat behind uncommitted Slayers who have full HP. Rear for the Dawi is beginning to collapse. Corn Chosen pushing through the remnants of those Dragonback Slayers and essentially ignoring Thorgrim Grudgebearer, except for the Chaos Lord himself who's looking to duel. Throwing Axe is moving into the rear, into position to fire into the Skolder Guard, and a couple point-blank Axe Volleys should do a lot of damage. But you know what also does a lot of damage? Steam, baby! Those Throwing Axemen are being torn apart by those Steam Cannons, and as they maneuver to charge in, a Bomb Drop is going to delete that unit from the face of the planet. Good night! It looks like Nagashino out there. The Takeda Cavalry charging in and stopped dead in their tracks by gunpowder and explosives. And now, it's looking pretty bad for Chaos because the PK Guard are touching exactly what they want to touch. Cornate dual weapons cannot take on armor sundering and all that AP. They will shatter quite quickly under the relentless advance of these hammers. And with that side broken and the Dawi cleaning up all the stuff in their rear, Army losses will set in momentarily, and Led Zeppelin will take over. The Spirit of Grungni put in some serious work this battle. Even the Corn Chosen and a Chaos Lord on a Juggernaut could not cut their way through. Pretty impressive showing of Dawi firepower there, and perhaps a tantalizing glimpse at what the future might hold for the Dwarves should they get another free LC or DLC. I think a Thunder Barge would be a pretty logical centerpiece unit in another piece of content for the dwarfs. So, High King Thorgrim Grudge Bear frankly didn't do a whole lot that game. He didn't really need to. Malachi McKyson on the Spirit of Grungni, on the Zeppelin, the Thunder Barge, the Airship, whatever you want to call it. 213 kills, 2700 damage value, got a ton of great broadsides into elite armored warriors, and really kind of thinned out their numbers before they were able, able to close into melee there. PK Guard did well, 1,000 damage value held down a flank by themselves, but the Skolder Guard were the other MVP, and I think it has to go to either the Spirit of Grungni or the Skolder Guard, or both in tandem. They worked great together, that Flash Bomb specifically, which I don't think the regular Thunder Barges have. I think it's only Malachi, because he is a Slayer Engineer. He has Engineer abilities that added utility of being able to slow down enemies and then restock friendly ammunition, which I believe he did use on the Skolder Guard to give them more ammo. Yeah, that's a really potent combination, and Skolder Guard got 210 kills. On the other side, Throwing Axemen got some good volleys in on the airship initially, but then were zoned out by the Thunders and the rest of the Dawi firepower, and I believe the Skolder Guard outranged the Throwing Axemen anyway. Skull Crushers had such an amazing start, they immediately crumped an entire flank, but as soon as the Dwarves turned their attention, towards the Juggernauts, they just got ripped apart by armor-piercing fire. Chaos Lord didn't do a whole lot, Corn Chosen did okay, but they got blown up by a bunch of bombs, and I don't know, like, unit might be OP, maybe not, I don't know, it's a mod anyway, it's fun to use, hopefully the dwarves get something like it eventually, really fun, hope you guys enjoyed.